Is using Retin-A bad for your health? Is it going to result in premature death? Can you use it safely long term? We're going to get into that in this video. But before we do, give this video a thumbs up. If you like hearing about skincare from a board certified dermatologist, make sure you're subscribed and you have your bell notifications on so you know as soon as my videos go live. Now on this channel, I talk a lot about tretinoin, sold under the brand name of Retin-A. It's FDA approved for acne. It's used in dermatology off-label for the treatment of a variety of other skin conditions and issues, and it also has anti-aging benefits. It can improve the look of sun damage. It can actually improve uh, collagen production. The downstream effect of that is going to be smoothing out wrinkles and fine lines. But if you go Googling tretinoin, eventually you may run across a study that actually showed an increase in death amongst people who were using tretinoin as part of a study. So we're going to get into that in today's video. Hopefully I will clarify to you all in this video what this study actually showed what it didn't show, the gaps in knowledge, and what you need to know moving forward. We have known for some time that tretinoin, because of its effects on sun damage, has some benefit in those who make a lot of skin cancers that are related to UV damage. In 2009, a study was published that had sought to look at tretinoin 0.1% cream as a chemo preventative in veterans. It was a done in a population at the VA amongst veterans who you know, get their care there, looking to see if tretinoin 0.1% cream would uh, have any impact on basal cell carcinoma and squamous cell carcinoma. They initially started enrolling patients in 1998, but they had to stop the study six months before its targeted end date because they observed an increase in death in the group getting tretinoin compared to the group not getting tretinoin. They started randomizing patients into this trial in 1998. The mean age at randomization was 71 years of age. 97% of study participants were male. So of course, when they started noticing an increase in death relative to the placebo group, they had to stop the, the study. After they observed this and stopped the study though, they wanted to take a look and see if they could tease out some underlying cause of death. They assess the VA master death file to look at causes of death. It's challenging though because the study did not seek out to look at death. So there's going to be some information that they simply did not collect or don't have because that's not what the study was designed to look for. They identified 108 in the tretinoin group and 76 in the control group who died before the intervention period. And then an additional 14 in each group died before the study ended. After considering other factors that might influence death, like smoking, age, underlying medical conditions, they still found an increased risk of death in the tretinoin group compared to the placebo group. But when they looked into cause of death, they couldn't find a particular cause of death associated with tretinoin use. It seems as though, however, many of the deaths were related to vascular disease, and or heart attack as well as lung disease. These are problems that are more common in smokers. And the reason this is of interest or queried is because there are two large trials that actually looked at uh, systemic, meaning given by mouth, vitamin A compounds as preventatives for lung cancer, and they actually showed that they increased the risk of lung cancer. Specifically, the alpha tocopherol beta carotene cancer prevention trial and the beta carotene and retinol efficacy trial. Both of these trials actually show a link between giving vitamin A compounds by mouth, whether it be beta carotene or retinol palmitate to smokers and an increased risk for uh, types of non-small cell lung cancer. So the idea here with topical tretinoin or the question mark is, well, are there some metabolites of tretinoin that maybe are more harmful to people who smoke? Is it being absorbed into the body to an appreciable amount? Are the metabolites accumulating and perhaps serving as some kind of a driver for lung cancer in smokers. For example, in the presence of tobacco smoke, can the metabolites of tretinoin have harmful effects on lung tissue? There was a study that fed into this hypothesis that was done in ferrets where they looked at beta carotene and cha changes in the lungs suggestive of lung cancer. And these changes were further enhanced 
with uh, cigarette smoke. That's all, you know, preclinical studies, you know, that need to be teased out further, basically. It's also been suggested that patients with certain lung cancers metabolize tretinoin much more quickly, and perhaps the metabolites of tretinoin coupled with the tobacco smoke could lead to adverse changes in the lung, putting them at greater risk for lung cancer. It's really important though to remember that these are just speculations. There's no proof and uh, association does not prove causation. You always have to tell yourself that over and over again because you can find an association with many things. It doesn't mean that they cause those things. And in the case of tretinoin, we have a lot of things going against the idea that tretinoin applied to the skin is going to actually cause any sort of death. First of all, the fact that tretinoin is its absorption into the skin is very, very minimal. We have many studies looking at both short-term application of tretinoin as well as long-term, at least a year's worth of tretinoin. The absorption into the body is negligible. And in the VA study, there was a lack of an association between dosing and risk. You would expect that if applying tretinoin to the skin was associated and causative of increased death, then you would expect there to be a greater association with more frequent use. But when the researchers went back and looked at the number of tubes that the participants refilled, there wasn't an association with a greater number of tubes and greater death nor was there an association with the frequency of use. So in this study, some participants were using tretinoin up to two times a day, and that association didn't end up bearing out with increased death in comparison to once a day. So there's a lack of dose response, and there was a lack of specificity of the type of death. Now, of course, the study is limited in that they didn't set out to look at death as an outcome. So there's gonna be information that's missing or that is not gonna be as accurately represented. They're just going off of what they have, but to what extent it was accurately reported is hard to say, like the smoking history or underlying medical issues. I mean, it would be more, in other words, it would be much more compelling if all of the participants in the tretinoin or the majority of the participants in the tretinoin group who were dying were dying of one type of illness, whether it be lung cancer or cardiovascular disease. But there's actually a mix there and no one cause of death is like overrepresented per se. There was also a lack of a statistical association between tretinoin and smoking. So for example, something that has a statistical association with lung cancer and smoking is asbestos. If you smoke, we know you have an increased risk of lung cancer. Asbestos, we know, is an exposure that puts you at increased risk for certain types of lung cancer. But smoking plus asbestos is an even greater risk for lung cancer. So you don't see that from the findings that they're getting in this study. So in summary, this study does not prove tretinoin causes an increase in death. Association does not equal causation, and there are multiple things from this study that suggest that tretinoin is merely guilty by association. It's thought that this observation from this study and why it was stopped early, the increased death, is merely kind of a one-off thing. Uh, it hasn't been repeated, and we really don't have a mechanism to explain this other than the theoretical uh, risk of lung cancer and smokers shown with oral vitamin A. But again, patients in the VA trial, they died of other things besides lung cancer, and it's hard to really pinpoint their smoking history that accurately. Suffice it to say, I would not worry about tretinoin and all-cause mortality. Tretinoin's been used for about 50 years now, and we really aren't seeing people dying from using it long term. Uh, so it's not something that I would worry about. It's just important to understand the nuance of the study. Uh, but I know it alarms a lot of people. I do continue to get questions about it. Uh, you know, you may come across it. So I hope this was helpful in clarifying it. I actually did talk about this several years ago in a video, but the video was kind of more of a broad Q&A format addressing a lot of questions you guys had at the time about 
uh, retinoids and retinol so it's not as searchable on my channel and I continue to get questions about it so I thought I would just do a dedicated sit down video I hope this was informative and helped clarify to you guys who had questions um, on the end slate I'm going to put one of my more recent videos about tretinoin so check that one out but if you guys like this video give it a thumbs up share it with your friends and as always don't forget sunscreen and subscribe I'll talk to you guys tomorrow bye